This video is our third look at the method of undetermined coefficients, so make sure you've seen the first two videos before watching this one. The goal of this video is mainly to address what to do when the right-hand side of your second-order non-homogeneous linear differential equation has a trig function. So that will be something that we look at in example one. Then in example two, what we're going to do is have almost the same equation. It's the same left-hand side, and we will make a modification on our coursing function and look at how to do example two most efficiently, given that we'll have already worked through example one. All right, for this first example, we are looking at the equation y double prime plus 4y equals 2 cosine of x. So here, the forcing function is that 2 cosine of x on the right-hand side. In addition, we have some initial conditions here, but we won't worry about that until we found the general solution using the method of undetermined coefficients. So let's go straight to the method. The first thing we want to do is find the homogeneous solution, which I denote y sub h. In order to do that, we take the left-hand side and write down the associated characteristic or auxiliary equation. So y double prime plus zero y prime, sorry, y double prime plus zero y prime plus four y has a characteristic equation that looks like r squared plus zero r plus four equals zero. This means r squared is negative four, so r is plus or minus 2i. We've looked at how to write down homogeneous solutions before, so all we need to do is recognize that these are pure imaginary roots. Then we can jump straight to the homogeneous solution and write y sub h of x is a combination of cosine of 2x and sine of 2x. So c1 cosine of 2x plus c2 sine of 2x. All right, so that's our homogeneous solution. And I just want to state that in the next example, we have the same left-hand side, which means that we will have the same homogeneous solution. So this is the only homogeneous solution that we're going to find in this video. The second step is to guess a good form for the particular solution to this differential equation, which is going to look like a generalized version of the right-hand side. Our right-hand side is 2 cosine of x. The cosine of x there is key, so we're looking at this trigonometric right-hand side. I'm going to guess that the particular solution looks like that. So by looks like, I mean it's going to be like a multiple of cosine of x. So how about a cosine of x? But I'm not done. Because there's another function which, when you start taking derivatives for it, can look like cosine of x, and that's sine. So we're actually going to have two terms here, a cosine of x plus b sine of x. Again, the idea is that when you start differentiating either of these functions, it's possible to, to land on something that looks like cosine of x. So this is our best guess for the particular solution. Now we just want to take this expression and plug it into the right-hand side. Sorry, did I say right-hand side? I meant left-hand side. I'll start it here and then continue it up here. So this is my function that I want to differentiate twice and then add to it four times this. Okay, so we're going to say that y double prime is like a cosine of x plus b sine of x prime prime and then plus four a cosine of x plus b sine of x, like that. Writing a bit uphill, but I think I can continue one more line. Let me take one derivative here. If you're good with cosine and sine, you could actually do both derivatives. I mean, you could get to the second derivative immediately, but let me just do this step by step. The first derivative of the particular solution is going to look like negative a sine of x plus b cosine of x. You have to take one more derivative. And then add to that 4a cosine of x plus 4b sine of x.
Okay. Let me continue up here. Differentiate one more time and we get negative a cosine of x minus b sine of x and then plus 4a cosine of x plus 4b sine of x. We combine like terms. We're left with 3a cosine of x plus 3b sine of x. All right. This is what we get when we take our particular solution and plug it into the left-hand side of this differenti differential equation and simplify as much as possible. We want this to satisfy the differential equation. So we want this to equal 2 cosine of x. What you do is match like terms. So we want 3a cosine of x to match up with 2 cosine of x. There is no sine term on the right-hand side, so we will say 3b sine of x should be 0. Or if you like, you could write this as 3b sine of x is 0 sine of x. Okay, so you do matching terms. This tells us that a is 2 thirds and b is 0. Okay. I think what I'm going to do, because I'm, this is a big solution, I'm going to probably run out of room. Let me now step aside and let you finish this right, writing this down. Then I will write out the general solution that the method of undetermined coefficients gave us. And then we will proceed with this initial value problem. So from our general solution, we want to find the one specific version of it that satisfies this whole statement. At that point, we'll be done with example one and we'll move on to example two. Here's the general solution that we just worked out. So our general solution, and this is what the method of undetermined coefficients gives us, is the sum of the homogeneous solution and the particular solution. We notice that the only unspecified constants live in the homogeneous solution. We've determined the coefficient for the particular solution. Now let's look at this initial value problem. There's nothing here that's really relevant to the method of undetermined coefficients because that brings us to this general solution. So in order to solve for initial conditions, we just proceed in the usual way. So for this IVP, we know that when x equals 0, y is 2. So let's plug 0 into this expression. Cosine of 0 is 1. Sine of 0 is 0. Cosine of 0 is 1. So this right-hand side is going to be C1 plus 0 plus 2 thirds. This immediately allows us to solve for C1. C1 is 2 minus 2 thirds. So that's like 6 thirds minus 2 thirds. It's 4 thirds. Let's differentiate so that we can plug x equals 0 into y prime. Term by term, the derivative of y of x is going to be negative 2c1 sine of 2x. And if you like, you can go ahead and put in our knowledge of c1. So c1 is 4 thirds. The next term will be 2c2 cosine of 2x. And then minus 2 thirds sine of x. There we go. Let's plug 0 into this. When x is 0, y prime should be 1. Plugging x in equals 0 into this right hand side, sine of 0 is 0, cosine of 0 is 1, sine of 0 is 0. So actually, we just get 2c2. Therefore, that second coefficient, c2, is 1 half.
That's it. Now we can write down the version of this general solution that satisfies the differential equation with these initial conditions. So here's the solution to the initial value problem. All right, it's going to be y of x equals c1 cosine 2x, but here we know that c1 is 4 thirds. So 4 thirds cosine of 2x plus 1 half sine of 2x plus 2 thirds cosine of x. Okay. When you've solved an initial value problem, you shouldn't have any constants left. So we've solved for c1 and c2 to have this function as the solution to the initial value problem. We have one more example. So this is a pretty short video. Our second example looks a lot like this example. It has the same left-hand side, so it has the same homogeneous solution. And then the right-hand side is going to be an exponential function plus a constant function minus 2 cosine of x. Notice here we have 2 cosine of x. We're going to be able to reuse this expression that we already worked out. We just have to make a little modification there, and then we will work through the details to expand this particular solution to include information for the exponential and constant. All right, let's take a look at this example. The left-hand side is the same, so we have the same homogeneous solution. So that we don't have to do again. Then looking over at the right-hand side, we have an exponential plus a constant plus a trig function. In particular, we're looking at 4e to the 2x plus 1 minus 2 cosine of x. We just worked with 2 cosine of x. So what we're going to do is let me go ahead and switch the sign. We will be able to reuse this function that we just found. 2 thirds cosine of 2x satisfied this differential equation when the forcing function was 2 cosine of x. Were we to set up the method of undetermined coefficients with the most generalized looking particular solution that we could, we could write down, the trig components that we would write down would match up with negative 2 cosine of x. And through all the same work that we did before, we would arrive at this. OK, so this function, negative 2 thirds cosine of x, is going to handle the negative 2 cosine of x. We just need to add a few more components to this in order to account for the exponential and the, the constant. OK, so all that to say that the next step in the method of undetermined coefficients after we find the homogeneous solution is to guess a particular solution. I'm going to generalize that exponential. So the heart of it is e to the 2x. Let's guess a e to the 2x. Then a general constant. So how about plus b? And we'll solve for b in order to match up with that 1. And maybe I'll just write this down and then almost immediately get rid of it. But were we to start with this problem, say we didn't do example 1, we would continue this with plus uh, c times cosine of x plus d times sine of x. All right. Here's the thing, though, is if we take this expression and we start differentiating it and plugging it into the left-hand side, this piece will match up with 4e to the 2x. So we will um, figure out a value for a to account for this 4. The b will match up with the plus 1. And then this whole expression here will match up with the negative 2 cosine of x. Essentially, there's no cross-pollination here when you have distinct functions. So we have exponential, a constant, or it could be a polynomial, trig functions. They're going to go like individually with the components that we're trying to match up with. So we already know how to choose numbers c and d in order to match 2 cosine of x. We just throw in a negative, and we get to our negative 2 thirds cosine of x. OK, hopefully you're with me with that. I will stop uh, insisting that we've already done this work. Let's just focus now on this piece so that we can wrap up this example. All right, let's take a e to the 2x plus b and plug it into the left-hand side. Okay, 
a e to the 2x plus b prime prime plus 4 times that. This is a nice expression to differentiate and then differentiate again. When we take the first derivative here, the constant goes away, a two comes down, and then differentiate again, the two comes down again. So that the second derivative of this expression is four a e to the two x. And then distribute the four, and we have another copy of four a e to the two x plus 4b. Okay, this gives us two equations for these two unknowns. We'll set this combination equal to 4e to the 2x, and then we will set 4b equal to 1. Okay, so 8a e to the 2x needs to equal 4e to the 2x, and then 4b equals 1. Again, notice there's no cross-pollination here, so you can work with these terms one by one if you like. All right, this tells us eight is, sorry, A is one half, and B is one fourth. Okay, and that wraps up this example. So to this general solution at the top, I just need to add the new components. We did a lot of work already. And then just by adding to our forcing function, we're just going to pick up some new terms. And they look like 1 half e to the 2x plus 1 fourth. OK, that's the end of this lesson. There was a comment I intended to make as we worked through example one, and I forgot to do so. So let me bring it up now. And that is that when we looked at this homogeneous solution, it's a combination of sines and cosines. In our particular solution, say for example one, but also here, we have sines and cosines. You just want to make sure before you proceed that we're not duplicating the fundamental pieces that went into our homogeneous solution. So if we had had cosine of 2x and sine of 2x, then this component of the particular solution would be duplicating information from the homogeneous solution. That didn't happen here, which is why I forgot to point it out. Uh, there's something that you do when you realize that your particular solution resembles the homogeneous solution too closely. So that I'll save for another video.